The garden that I'm in today has been designed by Craig Denecker from The Friendly Plant and it's at the Garden World Spring Show. Now, ultimately what I love about this garden is that it's a true Mediterranean style. But what Craig has really done beautifully is encompassing the style of Mediterranean but in a soft, gentle way. It's about the combination of the different textures and I think underlying that's what brings this garden really to life. It's about taking a spot that all of us could have in our garden. It's a rectangular space and by using the right textures of the gorgeous paving, the mosaic, the wood above me for the pergola, great combination of Mediterranean plants and you'll notice that the colours that have been used are all blues and greys soft colors included in here are whites and different hues of blue so what can we learn from this well number one we can learn that any space can be really interesting it's got an entrance point on one side and another entrance point leading you up into that paradise one of the major focal points of this garden is the awesome fire pit. Now, all South Africans love a fire pit. I don't know, there's just something about having a fire burning in your back garden. But this fire pit has been taken to another level. So here we have the fire pit in the middle. Great, practical, raised, so you in the seating area can enjoy it. But it's been combined into the water feature with this attention to detail of the mosaic on the edge. The water bubbles up here straight over the lip of the mosaic where the water literally comes alive and then into the pond and wow we're adding fire we're adding water we've got these textures plus our sight of being able to enjoy all this remember in any garden when you're starting out you need to get the hard landscaping done first and that often is quite a difficult choice because you've got to narrow everything down decide on your theme and then make that ultimate decision um, i really have not seen a wall, a backing wall like this that has been used so cleverly. And instead of making it just straight as most of us would, I love the fact that it has this kind of staccato movement in it, which immediately works as something in the garden that's not just a boring backing wall. That texture has been repeated on the top of the pergola, whereas all the, the pieces of wood that are on the top are not stretching and finishing all in a straight line as well which creates these most amazing lines in the shadows behind me. Really cleverly done. Also what I like is the fact that circle paving has been taken. You know like when you buy circle paving, much like they've used here for the fire pit. Well, the outer layer has been taken and used to make the bench, which means, number one, no cutting of any pavers with anything like an angle grinder because they are ready made to form that normal natural curve. That I love. That is smart thinking and gardening. And the best innovation in this garden are these guys here. This is cladding. No, it's not rocks. You thought it was rocks. Yeah, I could see you just sitting there thinking, my goodness, somebody built all of this out of putting boulders together. Well, the good news is that it's been made much easier for us fanatical gardeners. And this simply is a type of cladding. So it's got a flat base. Literally, you'd pick up one of these rocks, put a bit of tile adhesive on the back and bang, slap it onto your wall as easy as that. After the hard landscaping, it comes down to the difficult decision of what plants to put in. Let's take a look at some of the plant material that was used. And most importantly, you want to get the trees in first or those plants that are going to give you the structure of the garden. And the plant material that's been chosen here is perfect for that. Behind me, I've got a very handsome olive tree. Olea europeana, subspecies africana. Big word, very big word, but bottom line is it's an indigenous olive tree. Now you can also get the edible olive trees and you'll find varieties like Manzilla mentioned. And remember, they find in two separate areas of the garden center. The olive trees, which is the indigenous one, you're gonna find in the indigenous section where the trees are. And the fruiting olives, you'll obviously find by the fruit section. So don't get confused about the two. Bottom line is, other one that you get is they are gorgeous. The one thing that they have done very, very well in this garden is by lifting the stems and by lifting the canopy of, the, of this tree. Simply by pruning away those branches that are coming off the main stem, they've really lifted the canopy so that you're seeing the beauty of the tree and keeping the foliage all nice and high up so that you can also see the underplanting, which is really important. And then we've got a beautiful bougainvillea. Now, some of you will either love them or hate them. 
But either way, they're a couple that I really enjoy, and this is one of them. Um, this beautiful beast is called Jennifer Fernie. She's fabulous, because I'll tell you why. Every now and then, she throws out a dark pink flower. Remember, keep it well pruned. And the other thing that you need to remember is that bougainvilleas only flower on their terminal shoots, which means that they will only flower on the ends of shoots. So at some point, prune it, let it go, and then let it grow. Because as you're doing that, then you will get the bracts, or as we know them as flowers, which always come out on the terminal ends. That's the secret to getting it to flower. Of course, you can have the greatest hard landscaping, putting in the right trees and the right structural plants, but if you don't have the right fillers, the garden will fall flat. So let's have a look at some of the choices that Craig made in terms of his filler plantings for this Mediterranean style garden. And wow, I think he's done a great job. Let's take a look at them. All of them, number one, are sun loving. They are incredibly water wise, so they're not gonna need watering every day or every second day. And the combinations that have been used as well in terms of texture. In front of me, we've got this little kufia. Now this is called kufia mexicana, white wonder. It gets a little star-shaped white flower and it flowers on and off almost throughout the year. It doesn't get any taller than this, which is about 30 centimeters, nice and massed. So you really won't even be able to see the soil underneath it. What is great about this plant is that it's a true perennial. So when it starts getting a bit scraggly and starts looking a bit off, all you do, get your pair of secateurs and give it a good haircut early in the spring and it will shoot up again. In front of it, as a great combination of textures and color, we've got the white or the variegated mondo grass. Now the variegated mondo grass called Ophia pogan, it gets nice and tall, it's got slender leaves and as a texture combination against the kufia, it works really, really well. And they're great bed partners, so that for me is a great combination. Behind me, I've got agapanthus in the low planting, indigenous, beautiful pale blue flowers, tough as nails, so difficult to kill. Like you really can't go wrong with those guys. And then in the pots, also taking on the blue theme again, are the Freilinia. Freilinia is a great hedging plant or potted specimen, and you can see it's used so beautifully here against the gray wall of the background. All in all, a wonderful combination, subtle colors, gentleness, that make you just want to hang out here and chill.